beauties! Rosie here from rosiepena.com, a fashion, sewing, and lifestyle vlog. Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited that you're here. So in today's video, we're going to be doing another fun episode of Sewing with Rosie, and we're going to be making McCall 7979. The fabric that we're going to be using in today's video is a Ponte knit that I got from Mood Fabrics. I'll link it in the description bar below. But you can choose any kind of a sweatshirt knit, a ponte knit, you can use the interlock knit, a rib knit. You can really kind of just play around with the different knit fabrics that you use for this. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this Sewing with Rosie episodes. If you are, make sure you subscribe to my channel and also like the video so I can film more of these awesome sew along videos for you. So go ahead and grab your pattern and your fabric and we can go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, in today's video, we're gonna be working on McCall 7979. I'm gonna be using this walnut colored ponte knit that I got from Mood Fabrics. I'll have it linked in the description bar below. Just go ahead and read through your pattern instructions to get familiar with all the steps that we're going to do in this sew along video. And go ahead and cut your pattern according to your body measurements and you can use the finished garment measurements that are printed on the back of the pattern or they're sometimes printed on the actual pattern pieces themselves. So go ahead and choose your size and cut out your pattern pieces. I decided to shorten my garment by three and a half inches. To do this, you're going to need some paper scissors, you're going to need some tape, and you're also going to need a ruler and a pencil. I'm going to be using a Sharpie so that you can see this better. I'm shortening my garment by three and a half inches, so I'm going to measure up from the length and shorten line on my front bodice piece, and I'm going to measure up again three and a half inches and make a line. Then I'm going to cut at the length and shorten line and I'm going to bring that lower piece up to meet the new line I created with the Sharpie. I'm going to be following the parallel grain line of the pattern to go directly up and then I'm going to shift it over to meet the side seam. Tape that in place and then you want to bring your ruler in and just neaten that side seam. Go ahead and snip off any excess pattern piece that you need to at the side seam. You want a nice smooth transition along the entire side. Next, you want to repeat those same exact steps to your back bodice piece as well. Then you just want to bring your back to your front at the side seam and make sure that everything is nice and even. Once you've made sure that those side seams meet evenly on both the front and the back, you're all done with shortening your pattern piece. Now you want to lay your fabric with right sides together with the selvage edges meeting. So the selvage edge is just the finished edge of the fabric. So go ahead and grab those pieces and place them with right sides together again with the selvage edges meeting. pieces that we're going to need is pattern piece number one. This is your bodice front. You're going to cut this on the fold. Make sure that you snip into those notches or you make some kind of a marking. You're going to need those to attach your sleeve in a later step. Also, I like to make a small snip at the very center front. This is going to help me evenly attach my collar in a later step. Next, you're going to need pattern piece number two. This is your bodice back. You also transfer those notches as well. I also like to make an X on the wrong side of my fabric, especially whenever I have a fabric that looks pretty similar on both the right and the wrong side. I'm just using this clover chalk roller that I get from Joann Fabric. I'll have one linked in the description bar below. Next you'll need pattern piece number four. This is your collar and it's cut one time. Make sure you transfer all of those notches and those markings as well. Lastly, you'll need pattern piece number five. This is cut two times. These are going to be your sleeve pieces. Make sure you transfer all of those notches. to go ahead and place our front to our back with right sides together. You're going to pin along both shoulder seams and you're going to pin along both side seams as well.
Next we're going to grab our sleeve and we're going to place it onto itself with right sides together and we're going to pin along the underarm seam. So I like to place a pin at the bottom and then at the top and then I just like to go ahead and pin all the way throughout my sleeve. Go ahead and repeat that step to your remaining sleeve as well. Next we're going to fold our collar onto itself with right sides together matching those double notches. Go ahead and pin that in place along the double notched edge. Once you have all of your pieces pinned together, we're going to go ahead and go to the sewing machine. Go ahead and sew along all of the seams with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, making sure to remove those pins as you go. Also you want to make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end of your seam. This is going to secure your seams. ahead and neatened all of my seams with the serger. Now I'm just going to press my seams at my ironing table so that everything is nice and neat. If you guys ever wonder about the tools that I use in my video, I have each of them linked in the description bar below. Now that we have everything pressed nice and neat, we're going to work on our collar piece. So this pattern has a really interesting finish for the collar. It has a skewed cow neck collar. So you want to grab the seam line of the collar on one layer and you're going to move that over by 4 inches to offset the layers. This creates a really unique skewed collar. Once I've adjusted my layers, again offsetting them by 4 inches, I'm going to pin in place matching the raw edges of the collar layer. So go ahead and just pin all the way around your collar. Next, we're going to take that to our sewing machine and we're going to baste in place. This is going to make sure that all our layers lay nice and even as we attach them to our neckline. Now we're going to place our bodice piece with the right sides facing out and we're going to pin the right side of the collar to the right side of the neckline, matching that center seam. So go ahead and pin the collar to the neckline all the way around.
you've evenly attached your collar to your neckline, go ahead and take that to your sewing machine and we're gonna sew with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, making sure to remove those pins as you go and making sure that all of your layers are nice and even at the raw edge. Once you've attached your collar to your neckline, go ahead and neaten that with a serger or your desired method. Now we're gonna work on attaching our sleeves to our garment. So you wanna have your sweatshirt with the wrong sides facing out and you're gonna slip the sleeve into your garment with the right side facing out. So the right side of the sleeve is matching the right side of the garment. You wanna go ahead and pin the underarm of the sleeve to the underarm of the sweater. And then you just wanna go ahead and match those notches throughout the sleeve and the sweater. Again, with right sides face. Go ahead and repeat that step to your remaining sleeve and your remaining armhole. sew our sleeves in place with 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Again, remove all those pins and make sure that all the raw edges are nice and even as you sew. Neaten the seam with a serger or your desired method. And the very last step is to finish the hem of our sweater and the hem of our sleeve. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the hems up by one and a quarter inch along the lower edge of the sweater. I'm gonna go ahead and press that in place around the entire lower edge. I'm gonna repeat that step to the lower edge of my sleeve as well. Press the hems in place. Go ahead and sew very close to the raw edge. I like to use a lengthened stitch on this step. So I'm using a 4.0 stitch. Again, I'm sewing very close to that raw edge. If you guys want some more tips on how to finish a hem of a garment, there are several ways to do this and several options. Leave me a comment and let me know if you'd like to see more hem finishing options. Alright you guys, once you've sewn all of your hems in place, you are all done with McCall 7979. I really love the way that this garment turned out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit like and comment below. Also, subscribe to my channel for more awesome sew along videos. Make sure you stick around to the end where I'll insert photos of me wearing this sweater. Alright you guys, you are all done sewing McCall 7979. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure you hit like and comment below and let me know what you would like to see us sew next. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys!